Hi friend, welcome to the Gospel Roadshow. Exciting new feature, when Christians aren't very Christ-like. Episode 1. Two brothers were arguing over who should have the biggest piece of pie. And it got kind of heated, so mom came into the room and told them that Jesus would want the other to have the larger piece. One brother then exclaimed to the other, You be Jesus! Now we find this to be humorous, but the sad reality is that this is the norm for Christians and non-Christians alike. We read in James chapter 4 that quarrels and fights occur between us when we want what we don't have and think we're entitled to it. While there may be times when we should stand up for our interest, I dare say that most often that is not the case in a healthy relationship. Selfishness and self-centeredness lie at the root of most, if not all, conflict in families, workplaces, and churches. If left unaddressed, these can lead to dismay, strife, and possibly the ultimate end of the relationship. I'm happy to tell you that there is a remedy, and while it is quite simple, it is not necessarily easy. The remedy which I speak is the virtue of humility. As born-again believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we know that we are to live lives of humility. Humility is something that is a lot easier to talk about than actually live it. Many people have an incorrect view of humility. For example, humility does not mean you have to be a doormat and let people walk all over you whenever and however they wish. Jesus did not do that. And of course, he's our perfect example. Humility does not mean you should regard yourself as worthless and incapable of contributing anything of value to the world. I appreciate how C.S. Lewis put it when he said, Humility is not thinking less of yourself. Humility is thinking of yourself less often. Do the former and you'll engage in a brutal battle within your inner mind. Do the latter and you can expect much more peace, joy, with less strife and less grief. Humility is having an accurate assessment of who you are in relationship to God and others. It's holding a realistic, balanced view of your own importance. Bible characters who demonstrate humility include Peter after the cross, Paul after the road to Damascus, Moses, Joseph, and just about every person you tend to admire in Scripture. Let's do a short Bible study on humility and look at some text. First up, Proverbs 22.4. Humility is the fear of the Lord. Its wages are riches and honor and life. James 4, starting verse 6, But he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit yourselves to God and resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. 1 Peter 5, starting in verse 5, Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another, and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. I really like that last one. Ephesians 4, starting in verse 1, Therefore I, a prisoner of the Lord, beseech you, walk worthy of the calling which you were called, and with lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, any fellowship of the Spirit, any affection of mercy, 
fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done in selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also the interest of others. God is abundantly clear in his word that he values humility in his children, and he hates pride and self-centeredness, and the two simply cannot coexist in terms of relationship when both are striving to assert their rights and have their way, conflict is virtually guaranteed. In healthy relationships where one or both practice humility and put others' interests above their own, conflict is virtually non-existent. I do not recommend that anyone practice humility because they feel they must. Yes, it is encouraged by our Heavenly Father, but please don't look as humility as a have to but more as a get to. When you realize all that Christ did for you by humbling himself, coming to this earth, taking the form of a servant, suffering like he did, when you agree with Paul, who determined to give up his own rights in subservience to Christ and others, you realize it's absolutely the best way to live. When you live a life of true humility, it is impossible for people to poke your buttons and get you upset because of something they did or didn't do. Humility helps us to practice Romans 12, 18. If it is possible, as much depends on you, live in peace with all men and expand your ability to get along or live at peace with others. It also helps you to reflect the character of Christ more regularly and accurately. Do justly and love mercy and walk humbly with your God. Thank you for joining me. Tell me what you think. Leave me a comment below. I'll see you later.